Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. There was a magnitude 7.5 earthquake that was downgraded to a 7.0 near Papua New Guinea. 86 people reported feeling this earthquake. There was reports from Port Moresby, Madang. Uh, what do we got here? Doesn't give, oh, Lay. I guess you pronounce that Lay. Um, what else we got here? Nine responses there. And then Port Moresby, uh, we got 13 responses in that one, 41 from there. And then automatic by the computer, uh, magnitude 7 7.4, 7.28, 7.25, 7.28, 7.19. What else we got here? 7.20. 7.26, another 7 7.27, 7.23, 7.29, 7.42, 7.41, 7.50, another 7.20, um, 7.0, 7.63, 7 7.46, uh, what else we got? 7 7.19, 7.19, 7.22, 7.35, 7.57, 7 and as you know, further away the monitor, the smaller the earthquake would register. Originally, there was a tsunami warning. About an hour later, uh, they canceled it. Here we have the moment tensor ball. It looks like we have spreading. The fault line dipped going uh, southeast. Um, pressure uh, came in from the north and tension was applied going west. Using Google Earth, here we have the location of that earthquake. And it's close to the Trombonian uh, Trench. They say that this fault line um, doesn't have earthquakes. But recently, there's been a lot of shaking um, going on there. Which I think is probably attributed to this fault line. In 2019, there was a 7.1. And if we go to past history, in 1895, there was um, a large earthquake with a tsunami. Um, back then, they didn't have a way to measure earthquakes. and It took uh, a while for reports to come back in or to go across the world. But about 30 people died on one of the islands from that earthquake and tsunami uh, reports said that the ground shook for several minutes. And then came a loud roar. And the people that did survive on these uh, small atoll islands did so by running um, to the higher areas of the land, if you can call it higher, and holding on to coconut trees. An example, uh, the largest island in this area, which is the Kowena Island, it's an atoll, that is only 100 feet above sea level um, at its highest peak uh, back during World War II. Um, this area was used uh, during the uh, uh, war with Japan uh, to build an air base. I believe that was in 1948. Oh, excuse me, that was in 1943. This raised atoll is 30 miles long by 3 to 10 miles wide. And uh, they built a naval base there uh, for the war. But anyways, because of the shallowness of these um, small islands, hotels, um, yeah, tsunamis can be very deadly in this location. Also over here, in 2005, there was a 7.6. In 2019, a 7.6. And in 2000, 
a magnitude 8.0. All these earthquakes are triggered by the convergence, the movement of the tectonic plates. We have the Australian plate um, down south, which is moving north at about 2.4 inches a year. And then we got the Pacific plate that's moving west um, at 2.64 inches a year, give or take. There is a lot of small microplates in this location, and I drew out for you guys so you can see how the subduction is going on. We got the North Bismarck Plate, which is moving um, northward, subducting. Um, the Carolina Pacific Plate is subducting under the North Bismarck Plate. We got the South Bismarck Plate. Now that's interesting because it's doing a clockwise rotation, kind of like what's going on with the uh, west coast of the United States up there by Washington and Oregon. There's an area of mountains um, right off of the uh, New Britain Trench and the Trombonian Trench where we have a fold thrust belt. That's why we got the uplift of these mountains here. Uh, not a lot of research has been done in this area. And many scientists believe that this Trombonian Trench is an inactive fault zone, which I don't think it is. To the east, they have this Woodlark Rise. This area of the um, Solomon Sea Plate is um, spreading. Um, we got uplift going on. We have what's called the Proc Pocklington Trough subduction zone. You can see the direction um, that's happening there with the Australian plate. Let me pull this back out so you can see where that recent earthquake was. Right there. So we got uplift. We got spreading. New earth being formed. The uh, Trombonium fault zone um, that is subducting going south underneath the Australian plate. You know, you would think because there's so many large earthquakes within this area, um, somebody would have done some more research into this area than what has been done. But for some reason, the scientific community just isn't interested. I think we're going to probably see some more large earthquakes um, by the Solomon Islands. And we'll use Google Earth and go to that location. Because of the moment tensor ball, um, tension being applied going west, there might even be some more earthquakes along the uh, New Guinea Trench. And of course, then that pressure is going to be applied going up towards uh, Indonesia and that part of the ring of fire. Every action has a reaction, right? Yeah, but to say that this fault line is not active, I think is completely incorrect. What are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Uh, please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.